Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Thanks to PC Centric, link to his video below, you can now see the true performance of the 5090 and its true rendering power. DLSS, I mean, if we turn DLSS off entirely, they are DLSS off. If we're getting 28 FPS. As you can see, no DLSS, no frame generation. We now have the numbers for the 5090. I don't play Cyberpunk, but Z Warm Z Gaming does on a 4090 with the same settings. Without the DLSS now. Let's see what it can do with path tracing and native 4 No DLSS, no frame generation. We get down to 20 FPS. And this now has given us a comparison between the 5090 and the 50 series CUDA cores and the 40 series. And as you can see, between 20 to 21 FPS on the 4090 and 28 FPS on the 5090. Being the aviation genius that I am, I can calculate what is the difference in the CUDA cores by doing basic division and what is the performance improvement, which is 40% between the 5090 and the 4090. Using this math, I can then figure out what is the performance efficiency boost per CUDA core for each of the video cards, which is only five measly percent. That's right. The CUDA cores on the 5090 is only 5% faster than the 4090. So if you had 20 FPS on the 4090, you'd have 28 on the 5090. If you had 30 on the 4090, 42 on the 5090. And if we go to the 5080, you go from 30 to 35 FPS between a 40 and a 5080. 5070 Ti, three FPS more than a 4070 Ti, and the same story for the 4070 to a 5070, only three FPS more. As you can see, without DLSS and frame gen, there is barely any upgrade between the two video card generations, and this is pretty depressing. These are just my estimates, but I do want to thank PC Centric for being brave enough to film the actual performance of a 5090 without frame generation. And let me know in the comments, are you getting a 50 series and what's your current